Hey everyone, I'm Nathan, and today's the day. At the time of recording, tonight is the season finale of A Court of Fae and Flowers, which has been playing all summer long on Dropout. Now, if you aren't subscribed, I literally subscribed so quickly, and uh, let me tell you why. So this is a 10-part D&D campaign set inside the Feywild, and it's treated like a Jane Austen Regency-era romance. So there are all of these high stakes and interpersonal conflicts. It's giving very much Bridgerton, it's giving very much Pride and Prejudice, and I couldn't get enough of it. We follow all of our players as they embark on an event called The Bloom, which is when all of the courts of the Feywild get together to mix and mingle and secure alliances. And the best way to secure an alliance is with a marriage. But then other characters are seeking a love match. Needless to say, this entire series is right up my alley. And before I even saw any fan art, I knew exactly what I had to do. So in this speed draw, I drew all of the characters in Regency silhouette. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so for this speed draw, I actually gave composition a lot of thought. And I don't follow my normal process of doing an illustration. Most of the time, I start with all of the characters first. I took a lot of time to study Regency era paintings from about 1795 to about 1840. I really devoured all of them and I took a lot of time to look at the silhouette, the lighting, iconography, and furniture. I just wanted it to really feel like the time period and be very grounded. And I came up with this layout for the room, just so I could get the background first. And if you've seen the show, there's a lot of going to parties and socializing, writing letters, inviting people over to your house for tea or over to your nest for tea. But yeah, a lot of socializing. So I wanted to put all of the characters in this parlor-like room. I don't know the technical jargon, but I wanted to really lean into the Georgian style architecture. I wanted beautiful wallpaper and an elaborate rug and a nice fireplace. Getting to the actual characters, it wasn't too hard drawing all of them in Regency silhouette, especially because the art style is so good and it's very cartoony and I also have a lot of cartoony elements in my art style so I felt like it transferred over really easily except I have slightly more realism with my proportions and I just had so much fun doing these character designs and one of the best parts about doing fan art in quote-unquote Regency style silhouette is this is a fantasy world one of the characters is a bugbear and the other one is literally a woman with blue skin and tattoos which are not period accurate but I'm not going for a hundred percent period accuracy I'm more just just going for a look that is very much inspired by the time period, but I'm not beholden entirely to it. For example, K.P. Hobbs still doesn't have pants, but his uniform is now based on an actual oil painting that I found from the era of a real British soldier. And I found all these amazing hairstyles. Lady Featherfowl has this kind of wild hair that almost looks like a crown and it flares out everywhere. So I took the Regency era hairstyle with the very tight curls on the side of the face. And there was one style in particular where they would do these elaborate braids and these crazy sculpture-like top knots. They were so crazy and out of this world. So I took that hairstyle and I stretched it to its farthest extreme just so you could really get the feel of Lady Chirp Featherfowl. So now we've just entered our inking portion, starting with Rue over here at the very end. The type of silhouette that the Regency era was known for was called the Empire Waistline, which was right below the breast and then flaring down. It's also kind of called like a baby doll style. You'll notice that one of the most flattering ways to show off the empire waistline is from the back because the backs would be so well pleated you would really want to look over your shoulder and it just makes you look so cute and elegant and just adorable. That's one of the reasons why I put Gwendolyn front and center and her back to us. Same thing with Rue. And now we're getting into one of the elements of this illustration that I'm the most proud of and that's my idea for using a mirror above the fireplace. When I first started doing this composition it was before I had seen any of the reveals for the show so slight spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen A Court of Fae and Flowers, I highly recommend you click off now and come back when you're ready. So Rue is the seafoam green high elf. Rue belongs to a court called the Court of Wonder, which happens to be the same court that Banks, disguised as Gwendolyn, is trying to infiltrate because she believes that the Court of Wonder stole her court's magic. There's a lot of drama, but Rue also has a secret. She's not an elf at all. She's actually an owl bear in disguise, and she has a lot of internalized pain and self-hatred because of this, kind of like Fiona from Shrek. So we have two characters, both with initial designs that I absolutely loved and I wanted to draw and include in my fan art, but I have a slight problem because I also want to draw their true forms, who they really are. So I kind of came up with this solution to have my cake and eat it too, and that's including the mirror 
mirror above the fireplace so that the reflections are who they are on the inside, while as the figures standing outside of the mirror are what everyone sees on the outside. And then suddenly that gave me another dress to design, and I got to draw the entire room from a different angle, which just added more depth of field and implied space. And as an illustrator, I don't normally get to have that in my composition, so this was just a really cool decision to make, I thought at least. And here you see I'm drawing Lady Chirp Featherfowl, and I end up changing this design. Originally I had her wearing a coat that you would wear like on a walk or if you were to go outside in the Regency era, but ultimately I decided it was a little weird having her in a coat while she was inside where it's like warm, so I opted for something a little more simple. And then over in the mirror with Binks, Binks actually has giant moth wings because they're a fairy, and you couldn't quite see it from that angle, so I incorporated their moth wings on their collar just so that callback was there. I also really capture that head turning motion. Right now Gwendolyn and Binks both are really turning their heads, so I have the hair drawn in motion to really have that implication there. And then speaking of Regency hair, like with Squawk, there probably weren't any men in the Regency era with hair that long, but I kept it anyway just because it seemed like such an important part of the original art, and I gave him this swoosh at the front, kind of like a rooster, which is my own twist on it, because I feel like that kind of matched his personality more, like that's kind of how Lou played him. Lady Chirp Featherfowl has that crazy hairstyle that I was talking about earlier. Gwendolyn also has a time period accurate Regency hairstyle. And for Rue, I gave Rue these really beautiful curls that are from very early Regency era portraiture that are sort of a holdover from the French Revolutionary era. But I just really feel like in my heart, based on how Oscar played Rue, that they really love a reference. And there even was this whole outfit because Rue changes outfits over the course of the season that was based off of Marie Antoinette. That just kind of gave me permission to give Rue this hairstyle that was a little more loose, a little more provocative, very French. You know, much more of a throwback, a statement. And then with Binx's hair, Binx has short choppy brown hair. And funnily enough, a lot of femme presenting people in the Regency era actually had really short hair, like a boy cut or a pixie cut. These oil paintings weren't exactly painted the best, but they do exist and they are out there. You should look them up. And then for KP Hob, all right, this one I think is the most obvious. I made him really hot. And can you blame me? The way that Brennan plays KP Hobbs, I have no choice but to simp for him. And so when I was doing this fan art, I gave him Colin Firth hair, because as we all know, Colin Firth is one of the best Darcy's to ever portray the role, and I simply had to do it. The fan art gods compelled me. So now I'm just kind of putting in the flat colors for all the characters on screen. It was also really fun to add all these details from the show that I didn't initially know about, but I could add later. Like for Lady Chirp Featherfowl, right now she has this key around her neck, but it didn't really mean anything. I just wanted to give her more accessories. And another slight spoiler ahead, I end up adding her hand and I draw her wedding ring on it because she's married. And I know that Emily says the wedding ring is invisible, but I took some liberties and made it visible just because I wanted to get that nod in there. You know, she has a whole family. This is so wild because while I'm recording this, in just a few hours, I'm going to watch the season finale of the show. Like, I have no idea how everything is going to be wrapped up in one episode, and I'm posting this in the future, so you guys already know how everything is concluded. I think my favorite things from the show is the dynamic between Lady Chirp Featherfowl and Squawk. They just make such good cousins, and they have such good banter, and honestly some of the best jokes, and all of the romances are so good. From Antara and Binks, to Hob and Rue, definitely comment down below what you thought of the season, and your favorite part watching this show. And here we get into the coloring. You see I'm just doing all the local colors now before I get into the gigantic Herculean task that is painting the background of this image. Flash warning. I use a lot of adjustment layers in my coloring process so be careful. But anyway this background was so challenging and it pushed me so far outside of my comfort zone. Watching it back it actually looks kind of relaxing and I will say towards the latter half of doing the painting process it was relaxing but initially it was so stressful y'all. There's just just so many choices to make from a color palette and I constantly was worrying about if my colors were too muddy or too weird or too gross. And I was terrified because I didn't really know what I was doing. And even though I was looking at all this reference, it was just very scary because normally when I draw, I do my process that I did for the characters, which is very much inspired by animation. So a hard black outline and cell shading. But if I had done that with the background, I think it would have been way too flat. So I wanted a painterly background. And overall, I am very happy that I made that choice because I 
I do think that the separation comes through. I've been having a lot of problem lately with my images looking too flat. So I've been lowering the saturation to zero just so I can see everything in black and white. And that's the reason why there's this blinking that's happening on screen just to check my values. So yeah, that's why periodically you also see everyone silhouetted in black. So for a very brief moment, I thought, what if the whole thing looked like an oil painting? In a moment, you're about to see my attempt to that on Gwendolyn's skirt so that the whole thing looks like an oil painting. But it was really, really hard. Watching it back like this really quickly, it does look very good, but trust me all, I spent way too long on it and it was way too difficult. And I am happy with that separation. So to save myself stress, I think I made the right call. Ooh, this is the bit where I'm like, all right. This is the final stretch. I made a new layer and I said I am not leaving this layer of this Procreate file until I add all of the details to make the background look like a finished painting. So I just start painting all of the very intricate details you see in that back corner with this wallpaper mural like design and then the room divider and the chair and then the table. And then speaking of tables, I don't draw what's on this table now, but just some insight for the future. One of the best parts of the series are these little creatures called salt goblins. They are so fun and they act as these messengers between the different courts and they have all these great jokes like they only live for five hours. But yeah, I love them. I end up adding some on that table. And then here you're gonna see me draw this big design for the rug. And I actually kind of struggled with this a bit too because the way that I duplicate the pattern, it ended up looking a little too mathematically perfect. And I end up going back over it in another layer and just painting a little looser on top so that everything is a little bit more consistent. Another little nod from the series is I put a book on the table and I should have colored it green because of the green hunter, but I didn't. But I like to imagine that that's what that book is. I guess I could go back in and change it, but I already posted this on Twitter and I'm currently editing the video. So I think it's a bit too late, but you know, hindsight's always 2020. So now with the background pretty much completely finished, I add some more adjustment layers back over it so that the lighting is more precise. I add some beams of light from the open window and I think that helps with the separation between squad in the background and then also drawing more attention to the reflection in the mirror. I don't know why, but I never finish anything completely. I always just jump around from subject matter to subject matter in a piece and I just kind of half finish everything and then three quarters finish everything until the whole image is eventually completed. Does anyone else relate to that? Or are you the kind of person that completes everything before you can move on to the next one? So now I'm adding the finishing touches on all the characters. I do some coloring under the table and I'm trying to figure out the shadows on Rue. Their hand was a bit tricky, but as you can see I conquered it in the end. I thought about giving them a fan but ultimately decided against it because the angle was kind of weird. And to finish off Rue's look I give these beautiful sparkles that are reminiscent of their first look which was based off of the birth of Venus and one of Britney Spears's bodysuits which is an incredible sentence one of the reasons why I loved Oscar this campaign. I finished their feet. Ballet flats were really in during the Regency era. I add some glows. I clean up everyone's hands. Add these shadows. All of the grunt work that you have to do to really finish a piece and then I add this glare in the mirror and I think it really helps make it look like a mirror because it was starting to almost look like a window. So that's an interesting example of how I purposely flattened the piece instead of adding more depth to it. I start finishing some feet and then oh here they are the salt goblins. Oh my gosh I love them. They are so cute and they're having such a good time and just hanging out and being little friends. Ugh amazing. And then I think one of the last things I do is really render the gloves in Captain Hobbs' hands. You know, in case he just needs to challenge someone to a duel. And with that, this is the finished illustration. I loved working on this. It was so challenging. And I think I really learned a lot doing it. It's got me very excited for backgrounds in the future. Like I had no idea that I could do this style and here I am doing this style. The fact that if I really try and persevere and give it my all, I can make something as beautiful as this. It's crazy. I'm just so happy with how it turned out. And yeah, this has just been a really great series. I wanna thank Abria Iyengar, the queen. You are such an inspiration to me as a dungeon master. Your descriptions and the way that you really feed off and read your character's wants and like, make the magic happen. Ugh, thank you so much for this series. And thank you to the entire cast. It really has made me smile and laugh from week to week. And I cannot thank y'all enough. Loved this series. And if you loved this video, why not giving it a little bit of a like? Uh, maybe clicking the bell and commenting down below. And if you really want to support the channel, why not check me out on Patreon? Link in the description. As always, this has been real fun. I'm Nathan and I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. And I'll see you real soon. Bye!